This is chapter 33, recording number two. Um, other complications, substance abuse. Some pregnant women are addicted to alcohol or other drugs. The effects of the addiction on the fetus include prematurity, low birth weight, and severe respiratory distress. Sometimes can almost lead, can also lead to death. Fetal alcohol syndrome describes the condition of infants born to women who have abused alcohol. If you are called to handle the delivery of an addicted woman, pay special attention to your own safety. Follow standard precautions, wear eye protection, a face mask, and gloves at all times. Clues that you are dealing with an addicted uh, patient may include the presence of drug paraphernalia, empty wine or liquor bottles, statements made by family or bystanders, or by the patient herself. The newborn will probably need immediate resuscitation, so assist with the de delivery and be prepared to support the newborn's respirations and administer oxygen during transport. Special considerations for trauma and pregnancy. With a trauma call involving a pregnant woman, you have two patients you need to consider, the woman and her unborn fetus. Trauma to the pregnant woman may have a direct effect on the condition of the fetus. Pregnant women may also be victims of many types of trauma, including assaults, motor vehicle crashes, and shootings. So this isn't just a heavy uh, risk of fall as well. Um, pregnant women have a higher risk of falling and compared with non-pregnant women because of those hormonal changes that loosen the joints of the musculoskeletal system. And then the increased weight of the uterus displacement of abdominal organs can affect a woman's balance as well. Pregnant women have an increased amount of overall total blood volume of approximately 20% increase of their heart rate by the third trimester. A pregnant patient may experience a significant amount of blood loss before you detect signs of shock. Signs of shock. The fetus may also be in trouble well before the signs of shock are present. The body of a woman who has sustained serious trauma also often reduces the blood supply to the fetus. Be alert to additional concerns and be ready to assess and manage unique types of injuries when responding to a pregnant trauma patient. The uterus is especially vulnerable to penetrating blunt and trauma. Um, the trauma injury to a pregnant uterus can be life-threatening in a woman and the fetus because the uterus has a rich blood supply. In most cases, the only chance to save the fetus is to adequately resuscitate the mother. When pregnant woman is involved in a motor vehicle crash or similarly, similarly a violent mechanism of injury, severe hemorrhage may result from the injuries to her pregnant uterus. Trauma is one of the leading causes of abruptio placenta. You should suspect abruptio placenta when the MOI is blunt trauma to the abdomen and the patient's signs and symptoms are suggestive of shock. Common symptoms include vaginal bleeding and severe abdominal pain. Quickly assess and transport the patient, support the airway, administer high flow oxygen, place sanitary pads on the vagina, position the patient on her left side and call for ALS backup. Improper positioning of the seatbelt can result in injury to a pregnant woman and the fetus if they are involved in a motor vehicle crash. Carefully assess the pregnant woman's abdomen and chest for seatbelt marks, bruising and obvious trauma. If a pregnant patient goes into cardiac arrest, your focus is the same as with any other patient in cardiac arrest. Remember, the only chance you have to save the fetus is to do all you can to save the mother. Perform CPR and provide transport to the hospital according to local pro protocols. If a woman is in the last month or two of her pregnancy, compressions may be needed to apply a little higher on the sternum than usual. If possible, one provider should be assigned to manually displace the uterus towards the patient left side to facilitate blood return to the right side of the heart. You should notify the receiving facility personnel as soon as possible that you are en route with a pregnant trauma patient in cardiac arrest. Assessment and management. Your focus is on the assessment and management of the mother. You should Suspect shock based on the mechanism of injury. Be prepared for vomiting and anticipate the need to manage the airway to protect the patient from aspirating. Attempt to determine the gestational age to assist you in determining the size of the fetus and the position of the uterus. Follow these guidelines when treating a patient 
who is pregnant that has experienced trauma. Maintain an open airway. Be prepared, again, for vomiting. Keep your suction unit readily available. Administer high flow oxygen. Keep the oxygen saturation level high. Administer 100% oxygen by non-rebreather mask or as appropriate. Ensure adequate ventilation. Listen to breath sounds. Confirm that bilateral breath sounds are present. If the patient's ventilations are inadequate, provide or assist ventilation with a bag valve mask with 100% oxygen attached. Assess circulation. Control external bleeding. Maintain a high index of suspicion for internal bleeding and shock based on the mechanism of injury. Keep the patient warm. Transport considerations. Transport the patient on her left side. If a spinal injury is suspected, tilt the backboard 30 degrees to the left. Transport the patient to a trauma center if one's available in your area. Cultural sensitivity is important when you're assessing and treating a pregnant woman. Women of some cultures may have a value system that will affect the choice of how they care for themselves during pregnancy and how they have planned the childbirth process. Some cultures may not permit a male healthcare provider, especially in the pre-hospital setting, to assess or examine a female patient. You should respect these differences and honor requests from patients. Your responsibility is to the patient and is limited to providing care and transport. A competent, rational adult has the right to refuse any or all of your assessment or care. For teenage pregnancy, the United States has one of the highest teenage pregnancy rates among developed countries. It is likely that during your career you will respond to a pregnant teenager who may or may not be in labor. Pregnant teenagers may not know that they are pregnant or they may be in denial about it. As you begin to assess all female teenagers, remember that pregnancy is a possibility. Respect the teenager's privacy and need for independence. If possible, perform your assessment and obtain the history away from the teenager's parents. Become familiar with laws in your state so you know that when pregnant teenagers can give or refuse consent for themselves. Patient assessment. Childbirth is seldom an unexpected event, but there are occasions when it becomes an emergency. Dispatch protocols usually include the dispatcher asking simple questions to determine whether birth is imminent. Premature contractions may be caused by trauma or medical conditions. Scene size up. Take standard precautions. Gloves, eye, and face protection are a minimum if delivery has already begun or is complete. If the call is going to result in a field delivery and time allows, a gown should also be used. Don't be laxed in your safety observations and precautions. Remain calm and professional and consider calling for additional or specialized resources. Mechanism of injury. Nature of illness. You'll encounter pregnant patients who are not in labor, so it's important to determine the mechanism of injury or nature of illness. Do not develop tunnel vision during the call, focusing only on the pregnancy. Falls and the necessity for spinal immobilization may be considered. Primary assessment, form a general impression, whether the patient is in active labor or whether you have time to assess for imminent delivery and address other possible life threats. Perform a rapid examination on the patient. Take a moment to confirm whether the fetus will be delivered in the next few minutes or whether you have time to continue to evaluate the situation. When trauma or other medical problems are presenting complaints, evaluate these first and then assess the impact of these problems on the fetus. Airway and breathing. During an uncomplicated birth, life-threatening conditions involving the woman's airway and breathing are usually not an issue. However, a motor vehicle crash, an assault, or any number of medical conditions may cause a life threat to exist and may result in a complicated delivery. Assess the airway and breathing to ensure that they are adequate. If needed, provide airway management and high flow oxygen. Circulation, external and internal bleeding are potential life threats to the patient and should be assessed early. Blood loss after a delivery is expected, but significant bleeding is not. Quickly assess for potential life-threatening bleeding and begin treatment immediately. Assess the skin for color, temperature, and texture, or the amount of moisture. Check the pulse to determine if it's too fast or too slow. If there are signs of shock, control the bleeding, give oxygen, and keep the patient warm. For your transport decision, if delivery is imminent, you must prepare to deliver at the scene. The ideal place to deliver is in the security of your ambulance or the privacy of the woman's home. The area should be warm and private with plenty of room to move around. 
If delivery is not imminent, prepare the patient for transport and perform the remainder of the assessment en route to the emergency department. Administer oxygen. The women in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy should be transported lying on the left side when possible. If spinal immobilization is indicated, secure the woman to the backboard and elevate the right side of the board with rolled towels or blankets. Provide rapid transport for pregnant patients who have significant bleeding and pain, are hypertensive, are having a seizure, or have any sort of altered mental status. For history taking, you should obtain a thorough obstetric history, including her expected due date, any complications that she's aware of, if she's been receiving routine, regular prenatal care, and a complete medical history. Obtain a sample history. Some pregnant women have a history of medical problems for which they take prescription medications. Some women with no history of medical problems require medications during pregnancy. Pertinent history should include questions related specifically to prenatal care. Identify any complications the patient may have or had during the pregnancy or potential complications during delivery. Determine the due date, fetal movements, frequency of contractions, and a history of the previous pregnancies and deliveries and their complications. Determine whether there's a possibility of multiples and whether the woman has taken any drugs or medications. If her water has broken, ask whether the fluid was green. Green fluid is due to meconium, also known as fetal stool. The presence of meconium often indicates that a newborn is in distress and it's possible for the fetus to aspirate meconium during delivery, making it more complicated. Secondary assessment, your physical exam. Perform complete assessment of the major body systems as needed with emphasis on the patient's chief complaint. Assess for fetal movement by asking the patient whether she can feel the baby moving. If the patient is in labor, the physical examination should be focused on contractions and possible delivery. If at any point you suspect that delivery is imminent, you should check for crowning. Crowning is the baby's head bulging out of the vagina itself. If you do not suspect that delivery is imminent and the patient reports other problems unrelated to delivery, you should not visually inspect the vaginal area. Vital signs should include pulse, respirations, skin color, temperature and condition, and blood pressure. Be especially alert for tachycardia and hypo or hypertension. It's typical for a woman's blood pressure to drop slightly during the first two trimesters of pregnancy, but return to normal during the third trimester. Hypertension, even mild, may indicate a more serious problem. For reassessment, repeat the primary assessment with the focus of the patient's ABCs and vaginal bleeding, particularly after delivery. Obtain another set of vital signs and compare those with those that were obtained early, earlier. Recheck interventions and treatments to see whether they're effective. Is the vaginal bleeding slowing with uterine massage? In most cases, childbirth is a natural process and does not require your assistance. When childbirth is complicated by trauma or other conditions, however, any interventions you provide for the patient will benefit the fetus. Communication and documentation. If your assessment determines that delivery is imminent, notify staff at the receiving hospital. Provide an update on your status of the woman and the newborn after delivery. On rare occasions, the delivery of the placenta does not occur within 30 min minutes or you determine that the complication is occurring and you cannot be treated in the field, notify the hospital and provide rapid transport. For a pregnant patient with a complaint unrelated to childbirth, be sure to include the pregnancy status of the patient in your radio report. The hospital staff will want to know the number of weeks gestation, her due date, any known complications with the pregnancy. If delivery occurred in the field, you have two patient care ports to repeat. We'll go ahead and stop there.